Hello YouTube. So, as you may know, I collect a lot of different things. I collect slide rules, fountain pens, typewriters, you know, Hot Wheels cars, pencils, uh, playing cards, you know, Pokemon cards, of course. And uh, another thing I collect is old books. And not just any old books. I like to collect old engineering and science books. So I thought I'd share a few of those with you today. Um, as you can see, there's uh, quite a pile I've taken out of my bookshelf over here. So I'm going to probably split this into a couple of videos. But let's get started. So first let's look at the science books. This one is Fundamentals of Chemistry and uh, you know sold by Barnes & Noble. But what's very interesting is this little card in here. You can see it's been in here so long that it's actually discolored the pages where it was. Yeah? And this card says Marshall Field and Company. And this thing was sold on December 20th, 22nd, 1948. This is the receipt. Pretty interesting, huh? It even shows you where it was. I'll put it back where it was here. Yeah, but other than that, it's just your know, standard general chemistry book. Clear explanation of principles and their applications to human life. Everyday handbook series. I like how a lot of these old textbooks were really small and compact like this. Like, for example, um, I have a modern textbook here. You know, it doesn't even fit in the frame properly, right? Whereas this right here, this is a really nice little compact book. So, next up, Differential Equations by Morris and Brown, revised edition. So I guess back then they didn't just release an edition every time they freaking felt like it. They released editions when they needed revisions. And it was like, oh, I have the revised edition, not the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, or seventh, or eighth edition, like my fluids book. But yes, another thing about these books, especially the old math books, is that they're always written in this very sparse uh, robotic style that's definitely a far cry from the conversational style that we have today. This is a good and a bad thing. Good thing because you get the information you need without any of the crap that you don't have to you know read through. However, if you need extra explanation then these books are typically not very friendly for that. However, we have the internet, so you can definitely look up videos and stuff if you don't understand things nowadays. Back then, they would have had to go to their teachers. Wow. Oh, yeah. Let's look at the year of this book. This one is from... Uh, well, I guess we'll never know. But it looks to me that it's definitely from before the 40s. Next up, we got some physics books. I got these at a book sale at U of I. Um... Physics 1 and 2. So, these are basically, you know, your mechanics and electricity magnetism books. This is mechanics, this is electricity magnetism. And these are the Halliday and Resnick books. These are the gold standard of physics textbooks. And they are very well written. I enjoyed reading these a lot. This one is the particular one, is the second edition. And, I mean, just from that font, you can definitely tell that it's from the 60s. I mean, check it out. I mean, how could this not be from the 60s, right? And this particular book is from 1967. Uh, let me just look at a... Oh, is there a date in here anywhere? I know I saw it written down. Yes, here. Copyright 1966. Okay, 66. There you go. And uh, this one's also the same year. Oh, no, this one's from 1962. But they were clearly part of the same edition. This is the second edition of the books. Now let's go a little bit back into the past. College Algebra. Wow. Now this one's even more compact. I really like this book. It's so cute looking. And this cover is really solid. You can knock somebody out by just hitting them on the head with it. 
M Y M V Doyle, maybe January fifth, nineteen thirty-two, DePaul University. Now I love stuff like this. I guarantee you, this writing would have faded if it was written in ballpoint pen, but this was written in pencil, so it survived. This one is from nineteen twenty-six. Yep, and you've got your, you know, standard algebra too. I guess this is. They used to be um, calling this college algebra. Nowadays we call it algebra two, and we learn it in, you know, junior high, or high school, like early high school. Ratio and proportion, progressions. Um, I guess they mean series here. Yeah. Um, binomial theorem, inequalities, complex numbers. Yeah, so they've got everything down in here. Permutations, combinations, probability, determinants. They even got some matrices in here. Nice. Well, there you go. College algebra. And here's analytical geometry, alternate edition. I wonder what's alternate about it. I don't know what, what the difference is between this and the regular edition. But anyway, this one is from 1937 by the same company. And that's pretty clear since they're the same exact size and they look very similar to each other. I love this embossed cover style that they used to use instead of like, you know, the, the colorful, you know, overly pretentious covers of today in my opinion. Okay, so now we got our science books done. I am going to split this video now and talk about the electronics books next. Thanks for tuning in and uh, check out part two.